Okay guys, I'm at Newport South Wales Railway Station and I'm waiting for a very special train. It is of course the return of Gerald of Wales but with the newer Mark IV coaches. I don't think it's back to the old standard in terms of first class catering or anything like that yet but I'm really looking forward to getting back on the train and seeing how it stacks up compared to the old carriages. Um, that's certainly going to be a change. Um, I'm looking forward to this trip. It's going to take me all the way up to Hollyhead. It's about four hours and a little bit. Yeah, so um, why don't you come with me for the journey? We'll see what it's like and I'll speak to you again when we're on the train. And here he comes from Cardiff, right on time, the fantastic Gerald of Wales, pulled by a very smart looking DB Cargo UK Class 67 locomotive, a 67010 if you're interested. Uh, from the front, the consist comprises of two standard class coaches, uh, the second incorporating the shop kitchen area, and uh, then the first class coach, and then another standard coach. And as you can see, it was very busy, and I decided to walk towards the rear of the train, uh, where I was hoping to find the first class area. Upon boarding, I turned left into another standard class carriage, uh, which again was very busy, but I was confused at this point as to where first class actually was. After a quick discussion with the train manager, I discovered it was somewhat surprisingly between this coach and the shop, unlike the old service where first class and the kitchen was at the end. Anyway, I soon made my way to the new first class coach, which was much, much quieter. I was feeling really tired at this point, but I could finally relax and start to take in some of the views of the Welsh marches as we headed north through Hereford towards Shrewsbury and beyond. Okay, so the first class carriage now is a full size coach uh, laid out in a 2 1 configuration. I reckon there are at least twice as many seats here as they had on the old service. It's a mixed layout with tables at each seat, uh, whether you choose airline style or opposite facing. And if it was busy, I would choose a rear facing seat on the single side so that I could get the best views of the North Wales coast after the train reverses at Chester. Uh, the seats themselves are a dark leather with red striping. Uh, they look quite suited to first class and were very comfortable for the duration of the journey. 
Along with the similar coloured curtains, however, they do make the whole carriage look a little bit dark in my opinion. Uh, there is conventional power supplied at the seat sides and a button here uh, which enables you to recline the seat if you shuffle forwards hard enough. Uh, the area down the side of the seat was clean which was great to see. I prefer curtains to blinds, I think they look smarter and more reminiscent of a bygone age of travel somehow. Above the seat we find the reading lights and also a seat reservation indicator, which I think was still being prepared for future use as there seemed to be some kind of test pattern visible at the time of my journey. Towards the end of the carriage, a TV screen has been installed showing the news headlines in Welsh and English. And this is a nice touch, and oh, don't forget this service was really introduced to connect the north of Wales to the south for business travellers like uh, the Welsh Assembly members. Well, it's very heavily subsidised as a result. And next to the TV screen, you will find ample storage space for large luggage. And finally the tables, a nice wood design and feel, uh, which complements the seating quite well. The tables on the single side airline seats are hinged, enabling easier access in and out of your seat. Uh, we arrived into the Welsh town of Flint and it was then time to make use of these single seats to enjoy the beautiful scenery of the Dee estuary and the North Wales coast. After some stunning views we arrived at Llandudno Junction, an important station connecting Llandudno itself to the north and Blanafestiniog via the Conway Valley line to the south. As soon as we leave the station we cross the River Conway estuary by means of Robert Stevenson's famous Grade 1 listed wrought iron tubular railway bridge. And now stand by guys because how many other tunnels do you emerge from to see a stunning backdrop like this, the mighty 13th century Conway Castle built by Edward I. 
Oh, look closely, by the way, and you will see that the train actually travels through the adjoining town walls before passing the short platforms of Conway Station. Unfortunately, we won't be stopping there today on this express train. Right, so I guess it's time for the toilet review. And um, now, I was hoping to take a look at the accessible toilet at the end of the first class carriage, but unfortunately, it seemed to be, well, rather inaccessible. I therefore made my way through standard class on the hunt for another one. Now I eventually found one of the smaller sized toilets and yes it was quite compact. It was reasonably clean considering the journey length, a push button flush with a large mirror opposite. A touch sensitive tap and soap was present and also a touch sensitive hand dryer with fitted laser guided drying capabilities. A little bit underneath and latch locking door to exit. There were no baby changing facilities here. I suspect they would be located in the larger toilet I wasn't able to access earlier on. After the toilet I thought I'd take another walk down to the shop area located between first and standard class carriages, just like the old one. Uh, this is where all the cooking will be done hopefully when the full service returns in around about September 2021. And it looks like Transport for Wales will be calling this the food bar. And during my journey, there was limited food and drink available. I'm glad I got there early, to be honest. Uh, there was no alcohol on sale for some reason. I'm not sure why, but I would expect that to be back with the full service, as I said, later on in the year. Overall, the shop area doesn't have the homely charm of the old service, but instead is rather modern and bright. They're very similar to the standard class seating areas, I think. I hurried back to my seat, and it was time to enjoy some final views of the North Wales coast before crossing the Menai Strait on another one of Stevenson's famous bridges, the Britannia Bridge, guarded by lions at either end. An advanced single in standard class between Newport and Holyhead is currently retailing for £25 with first class fares costing £66. Now once the full service is up and running properly I would advise buying a standard class ticket and then paying for an upgrade on the train. Now, it should be a lot cheaper doing it this way providing there is availability of course and uh, obviously you'll then get a three course meal plus tea and coffee etc thrown in via troubles. Okay guys, and that was Transport for Wales at New Mark Fort, Gerald of Wales. Let me know what you think. I was in first class all the way from Newport, and personally, I prefer the old first class. Um, it was a lot more intimate. Uh, maybe there was an air of exclusivity about it as well. Anyway, I've been reliably informed that the full service is coming back by September. So watch this space guys, because I'll be on this train again, checking that out. In the meantime, I've got a boat to catch, so I hope you can come with me for that journey. I'll see you in a bit, and thanks for watching. Cheers for now.